Hey guys, what's going on? This is Apple Investigator here, and in this video I'm really excited to be able to bring you my full review of Apple's latest flagship smartphone, the iPhone 5S. Now Apple launched this device alongside a 5C model that is a polycarbonate iPhone, but in this video we're going to be focusing on the flagship device, the 5S. Now I happen to have the space gray model here unlocked and it also comes in a gold and silver variety available in all 16, 32 and 64 gigabyte configurations. Quickly taking a look at the specs, it features a 4 inch diagonal retina display, a 64 bit A7 dual core processor clocked in at 1.3 gigahertz, that works along an M7 motion coprocessor, it also features an upgraded 8 megapixel rear facing camera capable of producing 1080p video recording. It has a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera capable of 720p video recording. It also features a new Touch ID fingerprint sensor that we'll get into in a little bit. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and LTE technology to bring you all your wireless needs. So without further ado, let's jump in to the review and take a closer look at everything that this iPhone delivers. And hopefully after this, you'll have a better idea of if you want to purchase this device or just gain some knowledge about Apple's latest flagship. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, in general, there really is no changes to the design and style of the phone because it's the exact same as the iPhone 5. Now, this isn't really a bad thing at all because it's also gained some brand new features and specs on the inside with some great changes under the hood. But as we take a look at the top of the device, you guys can see that we have that same sleep wake button. As we pan across, we got that 7.6 millimeter depth at a weight of 112 grams, the same as the last generation, with our volume buttons and our silencer switch. On bottom, we've also got our speakers, our microphone, as well as our lightning connector port and our 30 millimeter headphone jack. Again, this is all the same as the iPhone 5. Now, changes firstly occur when we get to the home button. On the left there, you can see the iPhone 5, but on the right, it now features a crystal sapphire home button that essentially allows you to unlock your device and make purchases in Apple Store with your fingerprint. So this is quite a cool technology. So to set this up, you basically head into Settings, tap General, Passcode and Fingerprint, enter a four digit code to get into this login page here and then from here we can add a fingerprint now it's really not that hard at all you basically just follow the on-screen instructions it takes about no more than one minute to complete this process and once you get the success screen you're basically good to go so essentially what you gotta do is unlock your device place the finger that you programmed in touch the button you don't actually have to tap down and you're set to go now you can install apps, like I said, with your fingerprint as well. So that saves a lot of time instead of having to enter a passcode. Now this is not going up to Apple servers. No one sees this. It's stored right on the device. Now the rear facing camera has also welcomed some brand new changes. It still produces eight megapixel images, but has a larger aperture at f2.2, allowing more light in and a 15% larger image sensor. Now this produces better quality images and thanks to that new dual tone flash capable of producing both a light for cool temperature and warm temperature, you're going to get that perfect combination depending on your setting. Let's take a look at some unedited shots on the 5S. The front facing camera on the device remains unchanged. On the front there we also see our proximity sensor and our earpiece for listening to calls and stuff like that. But the camera is 1.2 megapixels and can produce that same 720p video recording. It's also great for FaceTime calling obviously that Apple has been providing as a service for the last number of years. Now the next thing we need to talk about about the 5S is the performance because this is the first mobile device to feature 64-bit architecture. It basically has two times the GPU and two times the CPU 
of the previous iPhone 5. So without further ado, I think I need to show you guys some benchmarks to get a real understanding of how fast the 5S really is. Now to demonstrate this performance and speed of the device, I'm going to use Geekbench test to show you guys the processor benchmarks. So essentially this tests the speed and performance of the device and gives it a general score for both single core and multi core. Now I think we're about to get our score here and comparing it to the iPhone 5, we can see that the single core score is 1411 as compared to the 710 on the 5 and 2552 on the multi core as compared to the 1278 on the 5. Now comparing this to the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, I know you guys want to see this, we get 947 on the single and 2978 on the dual. So the iPhone beat out the Note 3 on the single but was edged out on the dual thanks to that 3 gigs of RAM and stuff like that in the Galaxy Note 3. Now it would be unfair to talk about the iPhone 5S if we didn't mention the brand new features and performance improvements that have been brought along with iOS 7. So this Johnny Ive designed operating system has taken in so many new features such as control center, notification center, and the brand new feel of transparency and translucency throughout the experience. So I think that they've done a really good job integrating this with the iPhone 5. It's really fast, it's speedy, and it works really well with that A7 processor. I find that on a daily basis my battery life is pretty solid and I'm getting some really really good fast performance and multitasking out of the 5S running on iOS 7. So before this video does get too long, I think we need to finally take a look at some of the reasons why or why not you should get this device, looking at the pros and the cons. So reasons for why you'd want to upgrade to the iPhone 5S or have the iPhone 5S as your very first phone, well it's extremely fast. It's got that 64-bit A7 processor, everything is extremely fast, battery life still remains good. It's also got that beautiful retina display, and although some may think that it is still small and it doesn't exactly look the greatest compared to some of the Samsung phones, it's got great viewing angles and great color saturation and all that good stuff. It's also got a great camera on here, an 8 megapixel shooter with HD video and that slow-mo functionality now that can take some great shots, and it's great to have in your pocket at all times. The Touch ID feature is also great it allows you to unlock your device in a much more efficient manner and it is also arguably more secure than having a passcode lock and the changes that have been brought to iOS 7 are incredible they work extremely well with the new iPhone and both software and hardware come together to create a great experience for the user Obviously the 5S is a very solid phone but there are still a couple of nitpicky things that some people would prefer that they would have added to this device and there are a couple things that really kind of do piss me off there is still no NFC this isn't that big of a deal for me but it would be nice for the payment system and stuff like that for users to be able to have this technology and what really bothered me about the iPhone is why they did not put AC wireless into this device they've updated all their MacBooks with this faster Wi-Fi but not the flagship iPhone, which is odd. And it is also lacking a large display. I said that the Retina display was a great pro to this device, but some might argue that having a still a 4-inch smaller display as compared to some of the modern smartphones nowadays, that may be a con for some people looking at the iPhone 5S. In my opinion, the 5S is a great phone. I've been using it for about a week now, and I recommend it to anyone looking for a solid smartphone. This pretty well wraps up my review, guys. I know it was a bit of a long video, but I hope I provided some insight into Apple's latest flagship device. If you did enjoy this video, though, please be sure to hit that like button down below. It shows me that you appreciated my efforts in creating this content. And if you do want to see some more videos on my channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. That also helps me out a ton. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Leave your comment down below about what you think of Apple's latest flagship smartphone. And I'll catch you all in my next video. Peace.